Happy 2012, folks. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Actually, it's getting near that time again. Excuse me a sec. I dream of a different world. A clearer world. A kinder world. Where the old media meets the new. The earth will rise to embrace the forgotten, the cult, and the obscure. And heaven's fires will kiss your screen. This is my dream. Though I dwell in the house of love. Hey folks. The opening narration you just heard was adapted from today's subject, Broken Saints. Originally released to the web, a DVD release followed some time later, which eventually found its way into my collection. What's it about? It's about 12 hours long, so we won't be going into detail. Seriously though, Broken Saints is the tale of four disparate souls from the quiet corners of the globe, brought together by fate and the machinations of a corporate would-be messiah. So then, let us take a look at this strange and wonderful example of art and music that is called Broken Saints. What can we say about this Ur example of motion comics? It's very arty is one thing that immediately springs to mind. It has a deafness of language that not even the happy Viking himself could out-exclaim, and it handles the still-hot potato of Islamic faith with the same grace and dignity as the spirituality of the other characters. Oh yeah, spirituality. It's a big thing in Broken Saints. Whether it be the pure Christianity of island girl Shandala, the beauty of Islam, as espoused by Oran, the lapsed Catholicism of Raimi, or the many belief systems that Buddhist-turned-Shinto priest Kamimura has gone through in his life. There's plenty to nourish the soul in here. The tale, without going into an ordinary recap review, as someone wise and wonderful once said, there is too much. Let me sum up tells of four disparate souls as they are brought together by a CEO's plans to put an end to the varying grotesqueries of human nature, using a network of satellites to broadcast a wave of emotion. But along the way we meet Japanese egg farmers hey, two things come from here, mother Yuki. Eggs and poop. Sleazy strip club owners and their bodyguards. Not to mention the Nisinu of Lomalaki. Fortune tellers. I see some sushi in my immediate future, so it's time to close up. Newsstand salesman. Read enough of what's here to see that straight. And a very suspect tramp. Shandala Nisinu, adopted daughter of Chief Tui Nisinu of Loma Lagi, is a devout Christian, much as one can be on a remote island in the South Pacific. Her idyllic life is interrupted by the arrival of Gabriel Dunn, who claims to be her brother. Intent with words. Shandala, lost overboard as a baby, and washed up on the shores of Loma Lagi, is offered the chance to return to civilization. So now I will ask. Which she accepts. Yes. However, things don't go entirely to plan on the boat. Same. And have such a sweet voice. Let my brother go. So and she is lost overboard. No! Shandala represents the heart, such as it is. 
Her optimism and innocence is quite set apart from the cynicism of the other saints, particularly Raimi. Here is a character untainted by the rushing modern world, unbound by the petty hatreds and little bigotries of the Western mindset. Shandala's innocence, purity, a sacrificial lamb on a cross of screens. Woe betide anyone, however, that angers her, because they're gonna get it. <laughs> it is then through her that we are introduced to this world, and via her we judge the other saints. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Shandala Nisinu. Heaven is missing an angel. The, box. the Buddhist turned Shinto priest Kamimura carries with him a shard of a fractured soul. The soul of a rival who coveted Kamimura's position and his possessions. On behalf of the order. With the destruction of his home and temple, Kamimura receives a vision. On the advice of a traveler, America. Scary place. he takes a flight to America. Please refrain from touching the dog. And ends up in Coast City. Kamimura represents the spiritual center. As a former Buddhist, and now as a Shinto priest, it is he who brings the mysticisms of the old ways to the group. And while he is relatively little featured in earlier episodes, it is his experience of a supposedly inconsequential character that inadvertently reveals the message of the entire piece. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Kamimura-san. The Keeper of the Old Ways. Iraqi soldier and devout Muslim Oran Bajir has been sitting alone, haunted by the ghosts of doubt and terror. And he is dead to my priest! So much so that when his childhood friend comes to him, all Oran sees is another demon. Until it's almost too late. I look like you now. Captured by UN forces, Oran receives a new kind of chip in his hand, one that will receive a very special broadcast. Oran very much represents the hands, or rather the fists, as he is the most combat capable of all of the group. And while it is wrong to say that he spills blood with wild abandon, he is often relied upon when the spectre of physical violence rears its ugly head. Though there's nothing wrong with self-defence, or putting power against power in my opinion. When this was made, around about 2001-ish, Islam, the whole Muslim thing, was viewed with suspicion and fear. And so, in this fellow, Oran, we have a sympathetic Muslim character. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Oran Bajir. Concrete proof that the enemy, or so-called enemy, looks just like us. Three. Canadian programmer and hacker Ramey Matthews lives a thoroughly unfulfilling life in Coast City, USA, until he discovers the hints of something untoward in his employer Biocom's latest project. Cogent? Rumoured to be working with the Navy on EM weaponry. But oh dear! After that unpleasantness, Raimi is unexpectedly promoted to work on the mysterious Lear Spec Silo project. And this has something to do with what I found. In After taking home the test subject, with the blood. Raimi is hit with an EMP. And during the course of the next few chapters, meets up with the rest of the saints as the story gels. Ladies and gentlemen, the South Pacific supermodel, Shandala. Raimi represents the brain. Too smart for his own good, 
and far, far too inquisitive. It's through Raimi's actions that the plot itself is driven. And, as the resident deadpan snarker, it is, of course, our Raimi Matthews that gets the funniest and often the rudest lines. Save, of course, for Kamimura's wash room. Trust me, it makes sense in context. If the story seems to be Shandala's tale at the beginning, by the end, it is very much the story of Rainy Matthews. Thus then, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Rainy Matthews, your friendly neighbourhood deadpan hacker. It seems that Brooke Burgess, principal writer of Broken Saints, had no love for the US military. Every American soldier portrayed is some kind of boorish, hyper-masculine, ultra-patriotic stereotype. Case in point, Charles and Bravado, a couple of brash lieutenants with familiar hairstyles. They show up, generally act like ultimate badasses, and get more than they bargained for. As in both their appearances, they suffer the wrath of the saints. Another theme is an undercurrent of anti-Americanism. Much of the worst excesses of American influence are on show here, from the aforementioned military bravado, to the corporate drudgery, to the seeming indifference for the wildlife that so many Americans say makes their greatest country so great. I should point out, of course, that Broken Saints principal writer Brooke Burgess is Canadian. So you can see these supposed anti-American sentiments more as a gentle ribbing against the dangers of hyper-masculinity and ultra-patriotism rather than a genuine desire to mock what America stands for. I feel I should devote a few moments to talking about the show's creation. Principal writer Brooke Burgess, principal artist Andrew West, and technical director Ian Kirby achieved the original web series on a shoestring budget. The show's music was provided by Burgess's cousin, Tobias Tinker, along with Quentin Gray. When they were starting out, the three creators were the classic starving artists subsisting on dried noodle lunches to save money to buy bandwidth, which was eagerly lapped up by a global audience. Local benefit concerts helped raise money for hosting, and the name shone out across the internet. As for my interest in Broken Saints, I first discovered the website in early 2003, as the final chapters were being fleshed and thrashed out. From there, a government grant led to a limited DVD release, which proved so successful that the most unlikely donators, namely 20th Century Fox, stepped in to provide us with an international release. And we've barely even scratched the surface. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Broken Saints. And you know something? I'm going to put this into the House of Love. The themes and characters intertwine to make a truly mesmerising experience. From Shandala's Paradise Island, to the endless desert, to the lonely highway verges, to the skyscrapers of Coast City. The visuals are stunning. West's evocative artwork really sets the tone, not to mention the musical themes of Tobias Tinker. I challenge you to forget the hauntingly twinkly piece Taylor Sin. Be warned though, this is not a family piece. Quite apart from the myriad themes of religion, politics, spirituality and philosophy, there is much in the way of violence, bad language, and even some incidental nudity. These never feel gratuitous, however, as they are tightly woven into the plot, and feel so organic as to be unnoticeable. And while the pace can only be described as glacial, it never feels thin or stretched, only relaxed. So yes, if you're looking for explosions, cheesy dialogue and popcorn action, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for something deeper, something meaningful, something that stays with you, then you found it in Broken Saints. So thanks for watching. 
and join me next week for something a little longer and a whole lot lighter. Word is Bond.